Good morning, friends. Today we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm talking, of course, about the mid-year book freakout tag, which is a great tag to just recap how my reading year has been going so far and what I'm most excited for, for the next year. Not the next year, the next half of the year. You know how it works. And at the end of this video, I will have a very fun announcement. So stick around to that. First, I like to just quickly go over my stats of the year so far, because I just love me some stats. This year, for the first time, I've been tracking my reading. So far in the year 2020, I've read 37 books. That's usually what I read within one year. And now we're halfway through the year and I've already read 37. So going great. And honestly, I think the reason for that is because of audiobooks, because they have just doubled my reading. Um, they're great. Yeah, would recommend. Here you can see the genres that I've been reading. Mostly fantasy, which I'm not surprised by. Very just varied, which I like, and quite some mystery thriller. And if we just look at kind of like the type of books, I've mostly been reading adult books, actually, and a lot of nonfiction as well. Pretty varied, and I like that. And my star ratings is pretty clearly just a, a bell curve, which is what I would expect. But let's just begin with the questions. First one is, what is the best book that you've read so far this year? You guys know what I'm gonna say. You guys know exactly what I'm gonna say. You guys are not gonna be surprised at all. You know exactly that it's just gonna be Ninth House by Lee Verdugo. It's dark academia, it has secret societies with magic. It's generally a pretty dark and gruesome book. It features like heaven and hell and occult themes. There's murder. Here's a little secret that I know about this book, but it's that Lee Verdugo actually wrote this book for me, like just specifically for me. She doesn't know me or anything, but when she wrote this book, she wrote it for me. It's just a just little fact that you might not know. Next question is the best sequel. <laughs> and about that, do you wanna like take a guess how many sequels I've read this year? Like I've read 37 books this year. How many of those did you think are sequels? Two. Two of the 37 books that I read this year were sequels. <laughs> I may or may not have a series finishing problem. One of those sequels I didn't really like. So naturally the other one is gonna be the one that I pick for this question, but it's also a really great one. And that is A Conjuring of Light by V. Schwab, the last book in the Shades of Magic series. What a fantastic, satisfying ending to a series this was. This was one of those books that I just didn't want it to end. Like I spent almost an entire month reading this book because I just wanted to not leave this world ever. A good sequel just makes you feel satisfaction. And that's what this book did. Also, it's finally off my TBR, woohoo! Cause it's been on there for like three years. Next up is a new release that you still haven't read yet. And for this one, I, I, I genuinely don't have one. There aren't any new releases that I can think of of the past year that I really want to read. If there is a new release that I really want to read, I read it immediately. Currently I have nothing on my TBR that was released in 2020, actually. But the next question is anticipated releases for the last part of the year. And therefore I do actually have like three books that I'm like crazy excited for. The first one, <laughs> let's just get it out of the way because like everyone has this in their most anticipated releases, but that is The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue because I will read anything V. Schwab's writes. And also this has been said to be her masterpiece, like her magnum opus. I heard people say that this is like, you know, every author has a book that they were just supposed to write and the Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue is that book for V. Schwab that's just like this, the most V. Schwabish V. Schwab book. And I'm really excited about that. The next one is from Naomi Novak, whose other books I am really big fan of. And that book is A Deadly Education. This is another magical school, magical university type of book. It's supposed to be dark academia. And like, if you fail school, you die. Something like that, which is so dramatic. Again, one of those books that I think was written specifically for me. Um, you cannot tell me otherwise. And then the last one that I'm very excited about is The Silvered Serpents by Roshani Chokshi. This is the sequel to The Gilded Wolves, which as you all know, <laughs> was my favorite book of 2019. And I just can't wait for the sequel. I might even reread the first book because I barely remember anything that happened in that. But yeah, really excited for that sequel. And hopefully I do finish that series. <laughs> the next question is the biggest disappointment of the year. So for me, 
that's just without a doubt going to be The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I actually do own this book, I just don't have it with me right now. I'm honestly just sad that I decided to buy this. I even pre-ordered it. <laughs> this book was just supposed to be this really cool dark romance, but in my opinion it completely failed and it was just an illusion of a dark romance. I think it failed at executing good anti-heroes. I think it failed at being actually dark. I genuinely think this is one of those books that should have been an adult fantasy novel instead of YA because it was trying to be like really dark and sexy but then it wasn't dark and sexy because it was young adult so it couldn't really get too dark and sexy so it just felt like it wasn't really reaching its full potential and it didn't really work. I have a full non-spoiler review in which I just go over everything that I think could have been better so if you just want to watch like a rant review of a book that I didn't like you can watch it over there. Then the biggest surprise this year is actually a book that I read all the way at the beginning of the year in January and that is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gil Honeyman. This is a book that I just picked up from the library because I just wanted like a fluffy contemporary book that would make me feel good and turns out I was extremely, extremely emotionally <laughs> vested in this book and it destroyed me from the inside out and I loved it. Don't you just love it when you like pick out a book and you just think it's gonna be, you know, just like a fine read, just something to take your mind of things and then it just completely enthralls you and you give it five stars. Oh, I love that feeling and that's what Eleanor Elephant is completely fine did for me. It's one of those books that just feels really wholesome but also at the same time it's super emotional. I can't really describe it but it's basically the story about this woman who, you know, she's just very alone. She doesn't have a lot of friends. She just goes to work every day. She doesn't really have a very interesting life and it's just about her journey, coming to terms with her trauma and learning to be like a better person and making friends and it's just a wonderful story. Highly recommend it. The next question is who's your new favorite author? And this question I always find really difficult because I only consider someone a new favorite author if I've read multiple books of them and I've enjoyed those multiple books. And if I look at the books I read this year, I haven't really been reading books by the same author, so I can't really say anything about that. I think the only one that I can come up with is Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie because I read her two short essays on feminism and I really enjoyed that so I might really need to check out her other like full-length books because I really liked those short bits of what I read of her. And then we have your favorite new book character crush and <laughs> here I'm gonna have to admit I rarely have fictional crushes. I don't really know why. I tend to just really ship two people like I can really ship a romance between these two characters but then I don't necessarily ship myself with any of the characters, I just ship the characters in the book with each other, but not with me. But if I had to pick one, I think it would be Darlington from Ninth House. But I think it's just that dark academia vibe that just gets me. I don't know. Mostly just because he's also such an interesting character and he's like a really smart boy with like a tragic past. Oh gosh. I just... Oh no. Oh, he's kind of a cliche, isn't he? <laughs> He is kind of a cliche, but he's very well written, okay? The next question is your favorite new character, just favorite character in general. There are so many books that I love for their characters, but then I can't really choose like a favorite. But I do have one from a book that I'm currently reading that I technically haven't finished yet. I already know that she's gonna be like one of my new favorite characters and that is Frances Janvier from Radio Silence. You know when on the internet or on Twitter or something you see something very relatable and then you answer with, wow, you didn't have to attack me like that. That feeling, that's how Radio Silence is making me feel. Just I mm. can't really say much about it yet because I haven't finished it, but the main character, I just relate to her in so many ways and then in other ways I don't relate to her at all and I think that's just so interesting and I just love her so much. Like, this book is so good at making you care about these characters as if they're real life people and I can't wait to finish it and talk about it in my July wrap up. But for other books that had characters that I absolutely adored, we have A Conjuring of Light, just the entire Dark Shade of Magic series has really great characters. If We Were Villains has a great cast of characters that are all like ambitious students. And also Daisy Jones and the Six, fantastically written characters. The next question is a book that makes you cry. Now I don't cry very easily when reading books. I do tear up sometimes, but I did actually have two this year that made me like, tear up a bit. The first one is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Already talked about that. And the other one I really didn't expect but it's the picture of Dorian Gray. 
I did not expect to be the person that would cry over a classic. This book didn't make me cry out of sadness. It didn't make me cry out of happiness. It made me cry out of shock. I was just so just shocked and appalled by the things that were happening and how everything was evolving in this book that it just made me emotional. But yeah, this is my new favorite classic. It has a fantastic corruption arc. It has wonderful, interesting dialogue between all the characters and it's beautifully beautifully written. Even if you're not really into classics, The Picture of Dorian Gray is probably something that you might really enjoy. Then, a book that makes you happy. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I have two books that made me really happy this year. The first one is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. I talked about it in my last vlog. This is just one of those super magical middle grades. It's impossible to not be happy while reading this. It's one of those books that's so full of a wonderful imagination. It made me just like want to be a child again. The other one is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, I think. This is just a really great hate to love romance. I didn't even really love this book. I think I gave it just like three stars. I really, I just enjoyed it, but it made me really happy because just good, fun romances. I honestly need to read more because they make me very happy. So if you have any recommendations for like really nice, cool adult romance, let me know. The next question is the best book to movie adaption that you've seen this year. And I think I, I haven't watched any new book to movie adaptions this year, but like, you know, book to movie adaption, maybe comic to movie adaption counts as well, because I did see all the Marvel movies this year and I really loved those and they're based on the comics. So I'm just gonna say my favorite Marvel movie that I've watched this year. And I think that was Thor Ragnarok and also Infinity War. Those two, I thought were really great. <laughs> then we have the question that is, what's your favorite review that you've made this year? For that one, I'm gonna go with the video in which I read all of Susan Collins' favorite books and kind of analyzed how they influenced The Hunger Games. I'm really proud of that video. I really had a lot of fun making that video. Yeah, I'm really happy with how this video turned out. I know that you guys really liked that video. I really hope to make more videos like that in the future where I read certain authors' favorite books and kind of like get in their head. The next question is which is the most beautiful book that you've read so far this year? So I thought, you know, for this question, let's just move on over to my bookshelves. Very smooth transition. So these are my bookshelves and I'm just gonna take out every book that I bought this year so far so then I can judge which one I like the cover of the most. And also I can find out how many books I actually bought this year. These are all the books that I acquired this year so far. There's actually three more, um, but I don't have them with me right now. So that makes it 13 books. Oh wait, no, I'm missing a book. I'm missing a book. Oh, this one I also bought. So that makes it 14. I acquired 14 books this year. <laughs> anyway, let's look at their covers. This is them all. Um, and then I had three more at home, but I don't think I'm gonna pick those covers because I already immediately see one that I like the most. And that is A Wrinkle in Time because I love just the little illustrations on them. I love the color palette and of course foiled letters. <laughs> That's something that I always really like. But let me know which one out of the books that I bought this year was your favorite. The last question of this tag is, which is a book that you really need to read before the end of the year? For that one, I chose The Poppy War because this is a book that I've seen so many people talking about. Even though it like came out two years ago, it's kind of like sparked in popularity again. I really wanna get into more adult fantasy. I really like fantasy that's like inspired by another culture. This one's inspired by Chinese culture. The author is also Chinese. And here's where the fun announcement comes in because me and my good friend Sabine from Sabine's Book Nook are starting a book club. It's called the World Readers Book Club. And the premise of this book club is that we read books that take place all over the world or take place in fantasy countries that are inspired by other countries. Because most books obviously like take place in the US or the UK or they're like inspired by just medieval Europe. And we're kind of trying to break away from that. It's gonna be bi-monthly and then at the end of every two months there's gonna be a live show of us discussing the book. And the book that we chose for July, August is The Poppy War because this one's inspired by Chinese culture and we're super excited. Definitely follow us on Twitter because that's where we also posted the poll 
uh, to choose the book and you guys chose the Poppy War. If you want to get updates on when we know when the live show is going to happen, definitely follow us on Twitter because that's where all the information is going to be. So if you really had the Poppy War on your TBR, then just, you know, like read it with us in July and August. Plenty of time to read it and then we can discuss it together. And that's it for the major book freak out tag. I'm just going to stop rambling because I feel like I've been rambling for a really long time. You guys know how this goes. Let me know your favorite book of the year. Let me know your least favorite book of the year. I'll talk to you in the comments and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye.